Y254. Imagine. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Y254 News Updates and tonight on, on Lifestyle and Health. Uh, Wednesday we talk about education versus the job market. That is, we try to address issues that were raised during the International Youth Week. And with me in studio to help us understand and tackle this topic is Gideon Makumi, who is the CEO of Youth Mentorship Program. And we also have Angela Katua, who is a human resource, profes who is a human resource professional and a motivational speaker. So. This year's theme for the Youth Week was transforming education. And we have quite a few of things that were addressed uh, under the UN. That is, we have education versus high city. We have new youth development policy. We have education and values. We have education and talent development. We have education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. We have the future uh, of work. And among us, all the things that were discussed uh, during this week, the one thing that topped in every discussion was the high number of young people who were unemployed. And as we start this conversation tonight, I'd like us to start with what really does it mean by transforming education? Gideon. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, transforming education, uh, when you look at the agendas that were discussed, uh, the UN, and some of the policies that are there. One of the things that they look at is making education relevant to the job market. Mm. Because when you look at our system uh, a few years ago, you realize that it has just been about the competition. It has been about the grades. But looking at the new curriculum, things are changing. And it is about making education relevant to the opportunities that are there mm -hmm. in the job market. Okay. So it's really making it inclusive and something that would make the learner relevant when they get out of school. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Angela, do you share the same sentiments or do you have different on what it means to transform education? Yeah, I, I share his sentiment because uh, you find that the current education system we have is producing people who are not familiar with what is out there. Because that is why he's saying that the education we have is irrelevant, because it's not preparing the person, the youth, to the real world. Mm -hmm. And people come here, they get out, and they are, they're not really well equipped. They don't have the, the real skill mm -hmm. that is supposed to be used out there. So I think the education system needs to really look at uh, things a bit, a bit differently mm -hmm. and a bit deeper, deeper uh, looking at what is really uh, the reality out there. OK. Yeah. So we have young people going through school that is like 12 years of uh, education. And then you come out, you realize most of the times the career that I took, the path that I took, I may not get a job out of it. I have to try other things. So when we talk about transforming, what really should we transform? Because I think not everything that needs to be transformed, but probably there's that one or two things that if they are transformed, then it's going to make it easier for young people to get jobs. It's going to make young people, is, it's going to make easier for young people when they get out uh, to the job market to secure those spaces for themselves. Uh, for sure here when we talk about preparing the young people for the job and what needs to be transformed, I think the system should be uh, uh, prepared such that it makes the young people flexible. Because if we talk about, for example, when we were young, all of us used to say, I want to be a karma pilot. How many pilots do we need in Kenya? Mm -hmm. How many aeroplanes do we, we even have? have? Okay. Uh, I think the education system should be uh, prepared in such a way that it makes someone flexible enough that should I be put in this place, I'm able to adapt, I'm able to learn, mm -hmm. because the whole essence is learning how to be fit for a particular job. Mm -hmm. So I should be flexible. The education system should be uh, prepare me as a learner in a way that should I be placed here, I'm able to learn what is expected of that 
given job mm -hmm. and I'm able to perform. Really skill based as something that would make me I'm not stuck that if I went to school and learned to be uh, say an engineer mm -hmm. that I can now not work say in a different place. Okay. So I think it should be in a way that makes the learner ready for the market and flexible enough that they are able to work in any given area mm -hmm. without so much struggles. Mm -hmm. As opposed to you are just uh, like uh, caged in that particular career that you studied for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think are the things that are supposed to be transformed in our education system? I think we need to educate our young people that everybody is a natural resource mm -hmm. because we were all created with a gift. And it is, it's not just the teacher's responsibility. It's a responsibility for the society. It's a responsibility for the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, people need to nurture young people as when they are young, children, from the young age. To, and ident by ident first identifying their gifts, mm -hmm. we identify what, is, what this child is good at, good at. And if we nurture that, this person is going to come out with that gift. Mm -hmm. Because you can only uh, do very well in your gift. We have so many doctors who are in real estate. Mm -hmm. Why are they going to real estate? Mm -hmm. Because they have discovered that later in life that they have a gift in real estate mm -hmm. and not just in, uh, in, their, uh, in their treatment, uh, that industry. Okay. So I believe that if they started earlier now in the real estate, mm -hmm. they would even do much better. Okay. So it's good to, we, we nurture our young people depending on what gift we identify them with uh, when they are very young. Mm -hmm. So we start by, uh, by identifying who our young people are, what they are good at, if it is singing, let us nurture that. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the current uh, education system that has come up is going to, to even do much better than the 844 system that we have, okay. that has produced zombies that we all follow <laughs> one direction, you okay. know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, based on what, what the UN seek to, um, to achieve during the Youth Week, we see that the Ministry of uh, the Ministry of Youth was trying to highlight efforts that have been made by the state and non-state actors and the youth themselves in transforming education to be more accessible, inclusive, and relevant. What, as a ministry, do you think it has done enough? Let us first start there. The ministry is a government. Do you think mm. the government has done enough as far as uh, uh, providing these spaces for the young people? Uh, looking at the current situation, mm -hmm. it's a good thing mm -hmm. that they're introducing uh, a system that will focus more on the abilities of the child, mm -hmm. focus more on the talents, mm -hmm. focus more on what I like as a learner. Mm -hmm. uh, however, mm -hmm. my, uh, what I'm wondering mm -hmm. and listening to a few teachers mm -hmm. is have they been prepared in advance? Mm -hmm. Because someone has been teaching for the last 20 years mm -hmm. the old curriculum. Mm -hmm. They've been teaching the usual way of good grades are what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. They suddenly have come and told them, it is time you now start teaching these kids to focus on their talents, mm -hmm. focus on what they love. Mm -hmm. Like the other day, uh, just uh, last week, I was mm -hmm. in Machakos and I found kids sweeping on the road in a marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, they were wearing some gunias. Mm -hmm. And I, I was wondering what is really happening. Okay. And people are around recording videos and all that. Then I asked one of the persons, what is happening here? Why mm -hmm. are kids doing this? Mm -hmm. Then one of the teacher, that one of the persons around who happened to be a teacher mm -hmm. told us, this is what is expected of us. Mm -hmm. As much as I'm supposed to be home, it's a holiday. Mm -hmm. This is a project. It is new to everyone, but we have to do it. Mm -hmm. So my question, uh, my, my, my response to your question whether the government has done enough is, it's a good thing what they've done, but I think listening to those people, the stakeholders, especially the teachers, I think they need more training in implementing mm -hmm. the new curriculum. <coughs> okay. But so far, they're trying. So good. Okay. We are not yet there, but we are somewhere. <coughs> Okay, yeah. so Angela, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about 
uh, transforming education and we're talking about uh, having a curriculum that is going to help uh, young people not only be good in books but also push them to, uh, to, pa to pursue their passions. Do we have the right personnel to really mentor these kids or to take these young people through the new curriculum? Because the other day there was an issue where some schools don't have even the new books that are there for the new curriculum. So are we really ready as a country to make sure that these kids are going through the right system and that we are putting and teaching them the right, uh, the right things that are needed for them in the future? I think uh, the government is, is trying in um, providing the right, the right education, even for the teachers that mm -hmm. are existent. Uh, just e as, as late as yesterday, I met a teacher from my son's school, and she told me that she's going through a training. Wow. They are on holiday, but mm -hmm. she's going through a training mm -hmm. right now so that they can be coaching other teachers. She's, she will be a, a coach to other teachers. Mm -hmm. So I think there is that initiative that is going on to to train other teachers, the personnel is there. But apart from just the teachers, we also need, we need more. We need more of this because we also have a product that is already there and it's stuck. What about those children and the youth who, are, who have already gone through that, that old system mm -hmm. and they are stuck? Okay. We need something to, mm -hmm. to bring them out. Mm -hmm. So who is going to bring these people out? Mm -hmm. We need systems. We need uh, mentors and motivational speakers and, and trainers in the schools mm -hmm. who will be now training, or even in other organizations, who will be training uh, these, uh, other, these people. We also need these people, uh, organizations that are already existent. They need to, ex to embrace the fact that these people are raw. They need training. They mm -hmm. need to be trained so that they also come out uh, well. And it's a, I think, I believe it should be, an, uh, uh, CSR uh, responsibility for every organization to give value mm -hmm. to the people. So it's good that organizations also start embracing this, mm -hmm. this, um, this rawness that we have okay. for the youth. Because we have, we have so many people who are sleeping mm -hmm. because they don't know where to go after their degrees. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Angela has talked about training, where organizations need to be patient and train the raw people. Mm -hmm. but. It is, a, it is a challenge when you, t when you go to someone whose end game is making money and bringing in money to their business because they have to pay rent, they have to pay the employees, and tell them to be patient and train a young person who has been through school. So are we saying that the school, the institutions that we have are not equipping the young people well, that they don't need to go through another training by the time they're getting a job or by the time they get into the job market, Gideon? Well, uh the young people we have today, uh, some of us, <laughs> <laughs> what we went through, I wouldn't say we were really market ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fault is not even with our trainers, mm -hmm. it is the culture mm -hmm. we've had. When you look at the system, uh, it used to be who do I know where? So even some of us would relax knowing that I have an uncle somewhere mm -hmm. who when I'm done with school, I'll get a job in their company. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say it's the trainers that have a problem. Mm -hmm. I think probably it's the attitude that the has been, people. it's a culture, mm -hmm. yeah, we've adapted. Mm -hmm. Where you, and nowadays when you look at this generation, we are the microwave generation where everything is pop at, at a click of a button. Mm -hmm. But when you look at our parents back in the days, they used to work for these positions. They mm -hmm. used to struggle to get where they are. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an attitude that we've adopted, mm -hmm. which has made, even when we have a teacher teaching us, we are not serious. When you look at the campuses today, you find some people even pay others to do to sit for the exams mm -hmm. and these are the same people who are expected to come and deliver in, in the, the job same market, job market. Mm -hmm. so we are not really serious about our own lives mm -hmm. because we are looking at it as it will just happen but that is not the reality of life unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, that's why you see the things that are happening in some places are very tragic imagine for example, a medical student didn't sit for the exam 
and I'm here, I'm unwell, I'm going, they're the ones who are going to treat me. Mm -hmm. Probably with that day when they miss class, it's when they were studying about what mm -hmm. needs to be done in a particular situation. Okay. So basically it's about, I think even as the young people, we need to change our attitude. Okay. It is not just about the grades, it is not just about passing and finishing school. The real question is, can you really do it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be taking a very short break on Y254 News, but don't go far away. We're going to be right back. Y254. Imagine. Skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% pleasure, 50% pain, and 100% reason to remember the name. <laughs> Rajiz the DJ. Wana usema usema mbinu ufuata mwendo na basi runinga ya Y254 tunafuata mkondo huo kwa kisha tunalea vipaji na kukupa burudani kupitia vipindi vya mziki majadiliano na elimu pia tunaangazia masuala burudani na kukupa exclusive kutoka kwa mastaa uwapendao Hey yo mambo vipi this is a little celebrity Na boy kwa ni rafiki ya rafiki tupo katika vinamuzi vyote vya digitali Fresh. Fresh. Thank you for staying with us on Y254 News. And remember, you can talk to us tonight on our social media platforms. That is on Y254 uh, News, updates on Twitter. And you can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. So far, we've talked about what it means to transform education. We've talked about our curriculum. Is it fit? Is it an, a curriculum that really prepares the young people for the job market? And before we end this um, show tonight, we seek to understand how can the young people then tap on the opportunities that are there? How do we create jobs as young people because everyone is saying young people don't depend on employment let us all create jobs we also try to see what really are the funds that have been put up the ways of fund the youth fund what uh, measure what impact have they created and to take us back on where we left off i would like us to talk about according to stats we have 5.6 million working age kenyans who are economically unstable and we have the largest unemployment rate between the age 20 and age 24. So my question is, most people are telling the young people, create jobs for yourselves. Don't wait to be employed. And the same people who are telling, uh, who are telling the young people this information are the same people who told them, go to school because education is a key to success. Education is the only path to give you a good, a good future. So is it that we are pushing young people to go through school, to go through a system that probably we also don't believe in, and then when they're out here, we are pushing them to 
exactly go against what it is that we push them to go for the first place, Angela? I believe that apart from education, mm -hmm. there's, there's so much learning that, mm -hmm. need, that everybody needs to embrace. Mm -hmm. And we have to be out there to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to know that there's, there's so much in, in life that, than just books, mm -hmm. that, than what our teachers have given us. Mm -hmm. And even in school, we are told that the teacher gives you 25%, the rest is yours. Mm -hmm. So the same way, mm -hmm. we have to uh, encourage our youth to go out there and mm -hmm. learn new things. Mm -hmm. There are so many forums that are free, mm -hmm. offered for free. But when you even uh, call for these uh, events, mm -hmm. nobody comes. Why? They are disinterested. They mm -hmm. want things to happen very fast. Okay. They need to understand that uh, things don't just come by. Mm -hmm. You have to work for them. Mm -hmm. And by working uh, for them, uh, one thing you need to do is just add value to yourself. Mm -hmm. Keep adding value, keep learning more. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to learn out there. There are so many new opportunities. Mm -hmm. And first of all, ask yourself, what is it that you're good at? If you want to really employ yourself, what is it that you're good at? Mm -hmm. How can you turn this that you're good at into money? Mm -hmm. Because so many people need so many things. And we, we always uh, come across new innovations and wonder, uh -huh. well, how did you do? <laughs> how did you come up across? Uh, how did you come up with this? Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that there is so much opportunity, and the human mind is so diverse mm -hmm. that we can learn new things. We mm -hmm. can, the, the, and there's so much to be learned. Mm -hmm. The person who invented aeroplanes just had a thought: mm -hmm. How can how can I fly like the birds? Mm -hmm. You know, and somehow, the same way, we need to embrace our thoughts also, okay. because whatever you might be thinking and you think that is lame could be your breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So we need to, um, to educate our youths and to encourage them to, underst to understand that they need to diversify their thinking mm -hmm. and also diversify their study. Mm -hmm. Because what is in the books is not what is going to bring to your food on your table. OK. Yeah. So last year's theme was creating safe spaces for the young people. And this year's theme was transform, uh, transforming education. Would you say that between last year between 2018 and August and this year, that we've really created the spaces, that we've really done something that has been impactful among the young people. Instead of having that every year we have a new theme, address a new problem, and forget about the problem that was there last year. Gideon. These themes are good. Mm -hmm. Like last year, all of us, we were out there. Mm -hmm. Hashtag safe spaces yeah, for the for youth. The youth. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you look at the reality on the ground, okay. When it's that youth week, a lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. The whole focus, we even have events happening mm -hmm. in different the places counties, of the yeah. country, mm -hmm. the counties. Mm -hmm. But after that, it appears it's like it's just something for the show. When it's done, we even develop those policy documents when we have those sittings at the UN, mm -hmm. during these meetings, stakeholders, forums. But I think we just need to go beyond the show. We need to go beyond developing a document mm -hmm. and we go to the next level of implementing what we've discussed. Because many a times when we sit down as young people uh, with our leaders and we say, these are the things that we think would help us. These are the things that will transform, will help the youth mm -hmm. become instrumental in bringing transformation in our nation. But a month down the line, two months later, forget everything. Everything is forgotten. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering, I remember the places we've gone and even made those declarations. Mm -hmm. And you're even asked to sign. Sign, yeah. But thereafter, when nothing we try happens. to follow up, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. When you try to call these people, nothing, they have nothing to show for it. Mm -hmm. But I must appreciate there are people out there who are also doing a good job. Mm -hmm. They're in the government, but very few. They have the powers they have the platform to do that mm -hmm. they're trying mm -hmm. but what percentage okay it's very small mm -hmm. so if everyone who has been mandated with the responsibility of implementing these policies will do their job then i think it will be relevant and very important to have these themes every other year okay. but if you're just going having spending a lot of money in these conferences, spending a lot of money in these uh, seminars uh, all the time, mm -hmm. 
and nothing happens, it doesn't go beyond a document, then we'd rather not have any. Okay. Yeah. Talking about that, there's actually a new, they have a new youth uh, policy. Uh, but now, uh, for you, Angela, how now do the young people take advantage of the opportunities that are there? They first have to be on the lookout mm -hmm. for what is coming up because mm -hmm. there are so many things that are happening and mm -hmm. they are not even aware that they are happening. Mm -hmm. Very few people will show up for such things. Mm -hmm. So they need to be on the lookout. They need to be out there in, in search mm -hmm. for all these things mm -hmm. that are happening, okay. whatever government is offering, mm -hmm. even private organizations. Uh, I personally had uh, an event for a talk with some other speakers. And very few people showed up. In fact, youths, I think they were very, uh, just uh, to count. Mm -hmm. so, and even, uh, not even about my private organization. We have our churches, we call for events, and very few people will show up. Mm -hmm. Actually, the old people will even come to learn, to see and if they to can try fit and in see with the, with the young if they, people. If they can fit in or if, if they can even help the young people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because you find that if in the in our homes we have older people who are who are trying to nurture youth, mm -hmm. and they are wondering what to do with them. So they come to learn for them instead of now the youth themselves mm -hmm. having the initiative to mm -hmm. get out there. Mm -hmm. You cannot wait for the government to do things for you. Mm -hmm. You have to do it for yourself. Okay. Yeah. So now, as we wind up, how can the government now support innovations and entrepreneurship? First and foremost. These opportunities, we are told, have been set aside for the youth. Mm -hmm. Let us see them. Mm -hmm. I don't see the sense in uh, going in a government office mm -hmm. and with all due respect to our fathers and mothers, mm -hmm. and you find, or you find a 60-year-old mm -hmm. person is the one serving you. Mm -hmm. You find at the reception, it's an elderly lady. Mm -hmm. It's okay they can do the job. Mm -hmm. But if you keep if you've been doing this for the last thirty years, mm -hmm. why don't you allow that chance for your son and your daughter? Mm -hmm. I think the government also needs to look at when they talk about these opportunities, mm -hmm. what avenues are there to ensure that these opportunities really benefit the, the right, right people. people. Mm -hmm. Because employment when you look at most of the young people they, 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 they leave school hopeless mm -hmm. because they know these opportunities are not there. They know we've been promised. You talked about the, you mentioned the youth fund. Yeah. This is the, the youth Weso fund. fund. Mm -hmm. This is the Weso fund. But what process, what procedure mm -hmm. is required for one to get? And mm -hmm. even if I applied, would I get it? Okay. So it's really about the government ensuring that the system is so efficient and that they're able to deliver the promise. Okay. Yeah, and even for, and for us, the young people, I also think we also need to stop being too busy on social media. I think that's the other thing that is, that's where we are losing it. Mm -hmm. We have these gadgets, they're very good, but what are you doing with it? You find 90% of the time I have it, I'll be on Facebook, checking what, WhatsApp status and all that. I think we need to change our culture as well if at all these opportunities, we are to get them because an okay. opportunity requires a prepared I'll cut you mind. short because time no. is not on our side and just give Angela 30 seconds to just a last, a last comment that you'd give to young people watching you tonight for them to be better and to face the challenge in a different way. Uh, let them embrace personal development. Mm -hmm. It is very key mm -hmm. because when you develop yourself, personal development will help you come out mm -hmm. as, a, as that person who will stand out. Mm -hmm. Not when everyone is standing, you are, you, you're standing with them. Mm -hmm. Stand out. Okay. Yeah, and when everyone stand, stands out, <laughs> yeah, you'll be outstanding. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep developing ourselves. I encourage youth, uh, they embrace that. Mm -hmm. Personal development is a key thing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for finding the time to come and uh, speak about this to, uh, tonight. I hope that every young person was listening to us as learned something. I hope that every person was seated in a position to make changes that are going to impact on the young people is also going to create a big change. That is all we have for you tonight on Y254 News. My name is Patricia Morioki. Do have yourselves a very good night.